Yes. So women should not wear a wire in their bra as far as you're concerned? As far as I'm concerned, I would not have wire in bras. I certainly would not if I were a lady. I certainly wouldn't carry a cell phone in a bag over my shoulder. I definitely wouldn't sleep with a cell phone beside my bed or a decked phone because they transmit all day and all night. If you have a cell phone, assume it is on. If, if I had a cell phone, I would carry it, carry it in a metal box or put it in a metal box and only use it when I needed to. Assume it's transmitting, but if I were a lady, I wouldn't sleep with one beside me, I certainly wouldn't carry one, and if I were pregnant, I would treat cell phones like cigarettes. I wouldn't let anybody near me with a cell phone if I were pregnant. You raise an interesting point there. Are you saying if you stand close to someone making a phone call, you're being subjected to passive radiation? Somewhat oh, absolutely. similar to passive smoking? Absolutely. They can have a range of two kilometres. And this is what people don't realise. Um, you could have a pregnant lady on the bus or on a train or sitting next to you, and you can pull out your cell phone and make a 20-minute call and from an arc, that part of the radiation is going through the fetus. Uh, and people, it's like passive smoking. People don't realise it. You're, you're absolutely correct. And if you've got a person either side of you, and this is why uh, people are not being educated and why we are having this problem. Uh, and we, we're not just talking... Uh, the fetus in a human, the fetus in an animal, a cat, a dog, a rabbit, a bird, all, all the fetus will be affected. So if you have a decked phone or a, or a mobile phone in your house and an animal or a lady is pregnant, <clears throat> they are going to have continuous irradiation in the fetus. Uh, so what you, you, you really shouldn't use a phone or uh, a Wi-Fi, it horrifies me, I mean... Supposing you have a student, I mean, I teach advanced level students who are 16, 17, 18. Now, some of those young ladies are married or engaged and some of them are pregnant. Uh, or the teacher, who may be a lady, may be pregnant and will be irradiating, her, irradiating herself all day. You may have a pregnant lady in an office block where everybody uses these days. They don't have landlines. They, they have these walkie-talkie things. Yes. And, and the, the worst thing, <clears throat> and, and I'm not going to name drop because it will be embarrassing, uh, but coming on to this, the worst thing that I have been involved in with ladies and pop stars and I have been involved with a few, if not more than a few, pop stars. <clears throat> Watch lady pop stars. They don't carry microphones. They will have a transmitter. And they put the transmitter in the cleavage. And then they go on stage. And how many lady pop stars are we now seeing with breast cancer? Yeah. Other stars, they put transmitters, usually they conceal the transmitters and they're on stage, and they're very powerful transmitters, these. And how many pop stars or actors, actresses, theatre people are we now seeing <clears throat> with tumours? I have been called in to give uh, scientific documentary evidence with quite a few theatrical stage pop stars with tumours. Uh, and when I explain the proof from microwave radiation and I say, where do you keep your transmitter? And how powerful is it? Show me what, what the power is. How long are you on stage for? How often? 
how often are you on your mobile, which is about 20 hours a day. Mm. <clears throat> um, and and it, it's, it, it horrifies me that, that uh, and we, you and I can think of certain pop singers this year that have gone down with breast cancer. Uh, it, it's now not unusual. Yeah, but it's very common now. Oh, yeah. yeah uh, and, and this is one of the things that, that horrifies me, is that apart from the fact they have no knowledge, it's the, the accumulative <clears throat> effect of people not respecting or not having the knowledge, if they see a pregnant lady, not to use, not to text or not to use their phone. And you even have pop stars on stage saying, text me all at once, and you text something to go on a screen. And, and I see comedians who say, text questions and we'll pick them up at the end. And you've got the entire theatre texting all yeah. at once. Yeah, that's got to be dangerous. Now, so if you've got a pregnant lady there and you have th thousands of people all texting all at once, you might as well take the embryo out and put it in a microwave oven and put it on fry for two minutes. It, it's that serious. Mm. And then we wonder why we have all of these deformities and miscarriages and problems. Uh, and there are several pop stars now where texting, te everybody texting the stage is a good idea. Barry, the police and emergency services use a system called Tetra or Airwaves. I've read a lot about this system. There's been lots of complaints. People are getting sick near the transmitters. Is it a good system? It's a very interesting question and a very good question. I was initially called in and commissioned by the Police Federation to write the first report, the first safety report on the Tetra communication system, which is now on the internet. <clears throat> I condemned the system as far too dangerous for two reasons. One, that you have, they tend to carry the system here and it is transmitting through the brain and through the neck and some of the police do 14 hour shifts. And secondly, the pulse frequency of Tetra, which is around 16 pulses a second, is too close to the brain's natural frequency, which is 17, just over 17 pulses a second. The natural frequency, the beta frequency of the brain, is responsible for making decisions in emergency situations. And if you mess up that, you cannot make decisions. And the very job of the police the ambulance and the fire brigade, is to make emergency decisions in emergency situations. And you are affecting that one part of the brain that they need. The other danger of that particular pulse frequency is that it is what's known as the cyclotronic resonance frequency of the calcium in the body. <clears throat> now, what that means is that as the tetra is going through, the calcium is being knocked from the surface of cells, and the calcium keep the cell stable. The calcium is replaced by potassium, which only has a single bond, as opposed to the calcium's double bond. And the potassium will cause the cell to leak. And I think we now have something like 18 experiments showing this. So you now have what's known as calcium efflux or a calcium leakage in officers wearing Tetra. I said it is far too dangerous, A, because of the pulse frequency, B, because of the microwaves going through the neck and the brain, and it, it should not be allowed. <clears throat> the 
chairman of the Police Federation and the staff who commissioned me to write a report, the chairman retired. He was replaced by a lady who sacked me, said I didn't exist, said I wasn't commissioned to write the report, called a conference that I was allowed to attend but not allowed to speak. Uh, she called a conference and her opening words were, nothing is going to stop Tetra. The government doctor stood up at the same meeting and said to the police union, if you don't like it, resign. That is your choice. And that is in fact an illegal thing to say. This is illegal. But that was it. Um, they published papers to say I didn't exist and that I'm mad and I'm wrong and everything else you can read about me. And recently, only this year, another union that represents uh, mostly the ambulance and the fire brigade, but some police officers, usually special branch, they commissioned me to write an updated report. And in this report, which the first report is on the internet, this report, which was highly confidential for the legal department of the union, I quoted our government scientist saying how much you can expect to develop a brain tumour compared with the radiation you are getting for an ordinary person. <clears throat> and that's based on what is known as average use. And you'll probably be surprised to learn that average safe use for a mobile phone is considered to be about 20 minutes spread over a whole week. Now, police officers have these for 14 hours a day. So when you start looking at the maths, and my first degree, I specialised in nuclear and atomic physics. 